All right. Thank you, Jesse, and good morning, everybody. <clears throat> As he mentioned, we're going to be reading Acts chapter 15 this morning. This chapter is uh, mostly about the council at Jerusalem. The Jerusalem council, as it's known. Uh, also, the final six verses is the beginning of Paul's second missionary journey. We just finished his first journey in chapter 14, and now we're moving on to uh, chapter 15, and then the, the journey begins at the end of this chapter. <clears throat> We've got a new picture on uh, on the screen of a very good-looking fellow. Um, he doesn't look like that anymore. After no haircut for three months, on the sides, it's more like Bernie Sanders. On the top, it's like a man bun, and in the back, it's a ponytail. So uh, hopefully, once we get the uh, barber shops, beauty salons back up and running, uh, people don't have to use their avatars anymore. <clears throat> so anyway, I thank you for that picture, Jesse. Um, I'm going to start introducing this chapter by reminding us where we left off in chapter 14. Paul had just finished his journey, first journey. And in verses, uh, starting in verse, say, 24 of chapter 14, it says, They passed through Pisidia, came to Pamphylia. When they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Adalia, And from there they sailed to Antioch, from which they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had accomplished. When they arrived and gathered the church together, they began to report all things uh, that God had done with them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. Verse 28 of chapter 14 says, They spent a long time with the disciples. This long time that they spent was about a year um, at Antioch, at the church there, um, and uh, gave uh, briefings about what they what they did on their journey. So here we are now in chapter 15. In verse 1, it starts off by saying, Some men, these are the Judaizers, came down from Judea and began teaching the brethren. But since they came down, and I want to point out in verse 2, um, it says, uh, uh, I'm going to find the right words there. Um, or maybe it's, wow. I lost it already. Anyway, it, it, Paul and uh, Barnabas um, are going to go up to Jerusalem. So when we see the words come down and go up, we think of that as being north and south. But um, I've got a map that I'd like Jesse to put up for us. And this map will show us, of course, we will see Antioch on the map and we'll see Jerusalem. And in the Bible, when it says up and down, it's referring to elevation. So Antioch is a lower elevation than Jerusalem. So therefore, when you go from Antioch to Jerusalem, you're going up, up in elevation, even though you're headed south. So on this map that we've got up there, um, as I get, get into these verses, the whole uh, point of the council at Jerusalem was to discuss the issue of salvation. We saw in verse 1, or I'm going to finish reading verse 1, some men came down, these are the Judaizers, as I mentioned, from Judea and began teaching the brethren, unless you're circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you can't be saved. Well, that was a big issue about salvation. Um, that They thought you had to be circumcised, and that's what they came down and they were teaching which is not true, of course. Um, so uh, there in verse 1, the issue is, uh, how do you get saved? In uh, verse 2, as we move forward, verses 2 and 3, we've got Paul and Barnabas and others are going to travel to Jerusalem to meet with the apostles and the elders. These Judaizers that were hanging around, they were causing a lot of problems. So the map that I've got, uh, showing you, unfortunately, I couldn't find one with the arrows going the right way. So in this case, these arrows are going the wrong way. They're going from Jerusalem to Antioch. Actually, Paul's journey was 
that Paul and Barnabas and others went from Antioch up to Jerusalem, which you see there on the map. That's why I brought that out. <clears throat> All right, so verses 2 and 3, um, Paul and Barnabas and others are going to go up to Jerusalem. There it is. It finally showed up in my vision in verse 2. Some of the others uh, should go up to Jerusalem. So they head to Jerusalem for this council. They're going to get together with everyone and discuss the issue of salvation. Okay, move down to verse 6. It says, The apostles and elders all came together to look into the matter. That's this matter of salvation. Um, this is the meeting that they're going to have, and I've got a picture. Um, Jesse, if you'll switch to the next picture, you'll see the, uh, the council at Jerusalem. Um, this is the webcam that they had, uh, and we can see all the people in the room, and uh, this is where they're going to be discussing this, uh, this issue on, on the Jerusalem Council. Verses 7 and 8, uh, it says, um, After there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, Brethren, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, and that by my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe. Well, when he says, by my mouth, he's talking about uh, chapter 10 of Acts, where he went to, to see Cornelius, and he uh, gave the Gentiles there the gospel, and they all believed, and they all received the Holy Spirit, which was a sign that they were now uh, Christians. Uh, Acts 10.44, while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell on all those who were listening to the message. So this was proof that they, uh, they were Christians. You'll notice they did not need to be circumcised. They didn't need to follow the law. They didn't need to perform the rituals. Um, they were saved without all of that. So as we move through uh, these verses, um, when I get into verse... Uh, uh, 10 and 11, Peter's going to say, so why do you put um, these um, these things over the Gentiles? Why do you do that? Why do you put the Mosaic law over them? They're saved through grace just as we were, um, which was evidence of receiving the Holy Spirit. So uh, that was his big point. Um, we don't put We don't put the Gentiles under the law. They aren't. And they're different, and they're different because um, um, they don't have all that history of the Jewish nation that we go through in the Old Testament. Okay, verse 14 says, uh, Simeon has related how God first concerned himself about taking from among the Gentiles a people for his name. Simeon is Simon, another uh, version of Simon, and, of course, Simon is Peter, and we just talked or just heard Peter talking back in verse 7. So that's what that's who Simeon is here in this verse. <clears throat> Let me move down to um, verses, uh, verse 20. Verse 20 is basically the solution to this issue about uh, how you get saved. <clears throat> and it says uh, that they're going to write a letter to the Gentiles. They're going to ask them uh, to abstain from things contaminated by idols. That would be the meat that they eat uh, from fornication and from what is strangled and from blood. So at the uh, meat market there at the temple, that meat was uh, sacrificed to, to uh, God, but the Gentiles would get their meat from the idol market, meat that had been uh, sacrificed to idols, it was good meat. It was uh, maybe even better than the temple meat. Who knows? Might have even been cheaper. But they got it there, and and it just really disgusted the Jews uh, when they would see the, that meat being eaten. Um, it was just something they couldn't tolerate. So in verse twenty, uh, just a, just a summary is that the resolution here um, is that the Gentiles don't need to be circumcised, but they are asked to abstain from practices that were abhorrent to Jewish Christians. Okay, so verses 23 through 29 is the letter. 
this is the letter they drafted up, and they're going to send it around to the different churches uh, with the Gentile Gentile churches. Um, and it's it explains this whole thing about you don't have to be circumcised, but please, if you can, uh, if you don't have to do it, don't uh, eat that food, don't do the fornication, don't do those kind of things that are just disgusting to the Jews. It's basically uh, uh, not a requirement, but they're asking them nicely, trying to not do that. Okay, um, let's go down to uh, verse 36. And Jesse, if you'll put up my next map there. Um, This uh, begins the introduction to the second missionary journey. Um, We're going to see that uh, Paul and Barnabas are getting set to go. However, they are arguing over whether they should take uh, John Mark with them. You may recall John Mark had deserted them on the first journey, and Paul did not want to take him with him on the second one. However, Barnabas thought John Mark would have been good for the uh, for the journey and the mission, and he wanted John Mark to be taken. So the two, Paul and Barnabas, had their disagreements and finally decided those two fellows would split up. Barnabas would take John Mark on one way, and Paul would uh, then take Silas and go on the second journey with Silas. Uh, later, Paul does... Uh, um, uh, bring John Mark back into the fold. We'll see that uh, when he's in prison, he does ask for John Mark to come. So they didn't totally break uh, break fellowship, uh, you know, permanently over this. So this map that I'm showing you, I want to talk a little bit about it. Hopefully Jesse can take his cursor and follow our lines here. This map has both journeys, the first and the second on it. You may recall, if you look at the blue line, um, on the first journey, they left Antioch, sailed over to Cyprus, and from Cyprus up to Pamphylia and Perga. From Perga, they went uh, north up to Antioch in Pisidia, different Antioch, and then over to Iconium, to uh, Lystra, and to Derby. At that point, they turned around and went back the same way they came, so back to Lystra, Uh, Iconium, Antioch and Pisidia, down to Perga, and then sailed back home to Antioch. That was the first journey. It took them about about two years to do that. Now we're going to begin the second journey. We start in Antioch, and we're using the red lines now. They go north from Antioch up to Cilicia and Tarsus, then over to uh, Derby. Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch and Pisidia. They go back through those churches they visited previously. Then they go north up around Asia, all the way over to Troas. You can see that on the map. From Troas, they sail over to uh, Philippi. Um, They go to Thessalonica, down to Berea. And they get back on the boat, sail down to... um, Uh, Let's see, um, Athens, we see Athens on the map, we see Corinth, then back on the boat, they sail back over to Ephesus, and then another boat, long journey, uh, the red line takes us all the way back down to Jerusalem, and then they go up to Antioch, and they're done with the second journey. This took them about three years on that one. Okay, so um, I want to go back a little bit to a couple of earlier verses and talk about uh, starting in verse 13 through uh, 18. Um, This is James talking after Peter was done talking. And James is going to quote from Amos. Well, why is he quoting from Amos? What's what's that all about? And the verses there are quoted in starting at verse 16 through 18. In these verses, um, we're going to see... um, how Amos is showing that Gentile salvation was not contrary to God's plan for Israel. Um, Gentiles are in part of the plan. And I'm going to read, when I read uh, in Acts here, these verses from Amos, notice it says in verse 17, about halfway down, 
and all the Gentiles who are called by my name. Going back to Amos, where this quote is from, Amos chapter 9, verses 11 and 12, it says, all the nations, um, I just read to you in Acts, it says all the Gentiles. So um, the name uh, nations and Gentiles is the same. I believe it's the Septuagint that changed that. But I want to read the verses in Amos, uh, which are quoted in Acts. So Amos 9:11. In that day, I will raise up the fallen booth of David, and wall up his be- breaches. I will also raise up its ruins and rebuild it, uh, as in the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom, and all the nations who are called by my name. Declares the Lord, who does this. <clears throat> Part of this uh, promise uh, about the Gentiles being incorporated into the plan of God also comes out of Zechariah chapter 8. This says that the Jews will announce salvation to the Gentiles in the millennium. Let me read Zechariah chapter 8 verses 20 and following. It says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, It will yet be that peoples will come even the inhabitants of many cities, the inhabitants of one will go to another and say, let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will also go. So many peoples and mighty nations will come to seek the Lord. This is the Gentiles. uh, The Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to entreat the favor of the Lord. Thus it says the Lord of hosts in those days Ten men from all nations will grasp the garments of a Jew, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Okay, so that's where that comes from and why it's there. And uh, so now I'm going to start reading uh, Acts chapter 15, starting at verse 1. Some of the men came down from Judea and began teaching the brethren Unless you're circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And when Paul and Barnabas had great dissension and debate with them, the brethren determined that Paul and Barnabas and some others of them should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders concerning this issue. Therefore, being sent on their way by the church, they were passing through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversion of the Gentiles and were bringing great joy to the brethren. When they arrived at Jerusalem, they were received by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who had believed stood up saying, it is necessary to circumcise them and direct them Uh, to observe the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders came together to look into this matter. After there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, Brethren, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that by my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, testified to them, giving them the Holy Spirit just as he also did to us. And he made no distinction between us and them, cleansing their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why do you put God to the test by placing upon the neck of the disciples a yoke which neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? But we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus in the same way that they are also. All the people kept silent, and they were listening to Barnabas and Paul as they were relating what signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. And after they stopped speaking, James answered, saying, Brethren, listen to me. Simeon has related how God first concerned himself about taking from among the Gentiles a people for his name. With these words of of the prophets, agree just as it is written, after these things I will return, and I will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen, and I will rebuild its ruins, and I will restore it. 
so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who made these things known from long ago. Therefore, it is my judgment that we do not trouble those who are turning to God from among the Gentiles, but that we write to them that they may abstain from things contaminated by idols and from fornication and from what is strangled and from blood. For Moses from ancient generations has in every city those who preached him since he is read in the synagogues every Sabbath. Then it seemed good to the apostles and the elders with the whole church to choose men from among them to send to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, Judas called Barsabbas, and Silas leading men among the brethren. And they sent this letter by them. The apostles and the brethren who are elders to the brethren in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia who are from the Gentiles' greetings. Since we have heard that some of our number to whom we gave no instruction have disturbed you with their words, unsettling your souls, it seemed good to us, having become one mind, to select men to send to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore we have sent Judas and Silas, whom themselves will also report the same things by word of mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these essentials, that you abstain from things sacrificed to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication. If you keep yourselves free from such things, you will do well. Farewell. So when they were sent away, they went down to Antioch, and having gathered the congregation together, they delivered the letter. When they had read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. Judas and Silas, also being prophets themselves, encouraged and strengthened the brethren with a lengthy message. And, uh, excuse me, after they had spent time there, they were sent away from the brethren in peace to those who had been sent who had sent them out. But it seemed good to Silas to remain there. But Paul and Barnabas stayed in Antioch, teaching and preaching with many others also the word of the Lord. After some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us return and visit the brethren in every city which we proclaim the word of the Lord and see how they are. Barnabas wanted to take John, called Mark, along with them also, but Paul kept insisting that they should not take him along, who had, uh, who had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. And there occurred such a sharp disagreement that they separated from one another, and Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and left being committed by the brethren to the grace of the Lord. And he was traveling through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Thank you for that reading of the word. It's always encouraging to see how things were done in the past and how we are following their precedent. 